Hey guys, we're back with another week of football. I'm here with Amadou, um, Rashad. And this past weekend, we had two nail biter games. Like the Bengals, I know people were doubting them. They were the underdogs going into this weekend, and they came out on top. So, how do you guys feel about the the Bengals and the Rams? How do you feel about this matchup? How you feeling, Rashad? I'm feeling great about this matchup. Two teams that are fresh and new. We ain't getting the original Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes showdown. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about the Bengals. Um, coming off this matchup, Joe Shiesty, Jamal Chase, and literally with this defense forming, like they literally found a way to beat Kansas City and beat them in the second half, coming off a 21-3 deficit. And with the Rams, I believe in this team from day one, requiring Levar, Lamar Miller, um, the, one of the best defensive players with Aaron Donald and acquiring Odell Beckham with the best receiver, Cooper Cup. They have the formula with Matthew Stafford. They have the formula to either – Go to the Super Bowl and win it. So I have believed that team since day one. Yeah, man. Look, both teams are incredible. The Rams, you know, we know they went all in, and it's paying off for them. You know, it's paying yeah. off for going to the Super Bowl, a big chance to win it. The Bengals, I mean, out of the season, come on now. Nobody expects them to be where they are right now. Joe Burrow coming off an ACL injury, second-year quarterback, doing what he did. I mean, these young quarterbacks, man, I don't know what's, what's going on, but, like, Joe Burrow making it to the Super Bowl the second year. We got Patrick Mahomes, he won an MVP. His second season, Josh Allen. Lamar Jackson won an MVP his second season as well. So, I mean, these young quarterbacks are going crazy, man. They're going crazy. Young team versus a vet team. It's going to be a great Super Bowl matchup, man. But with that, we got to talk about the other end, you know, of the games. Rashad, man, what happened to the Chiefs and Niners, bro? I'm going to start off with the Chiefs. And I did mention this in the last episode. I, I know I went to my own tone, but... I said that the Chiefs defense was a liability coming into this game. And they, if they were going to win this game, they would have to play four quarters on the defense side of the football, which they didn't. Up 21-3 at halftime, well, 21-10 at halftime, um, going into half um, with the Bengals with that momentum. You had to find a way to literally defend with four quarters. It was times where, of course, with the Bengals O-line being the, one of the worst O-lines in the league, and you have not, it was been a play in the fourth quarter where Joe Burrow was really trapped in the pocket, and he found a way to get outside the pocket and make a play. And literally, it's three Kansas City defensive linemen. How can you not make that tackle? The tackle was horrible, um, fourth quarter, and I top of with Patrick Mahomes. He did not play in the second half at all. And I said in the last episode before, if the Bengals find a way to stop either Travis Kelsey or Tariq Hill, it's ball game. And what happened? In the second <laughs> half, they shut down Tyreek Hill yep. and Travis Kelsey in that game. You see what happens. You see uh, Patrick Mahomes scrambling, taking sacks that's unacceptable. So that's literally that cost him that loss. And it was a great game plan on the uh, uh, Bengals sideline on both sides of the football. Yeah, Rashad, I definitely hear what you're saying about the Chiefs, man. I mean, I feel like this game has got to fall on Patrick Mahomes. I don't know what he was doing in that second half, you know. He went 8 of 18 for 100 yards. And like you said, the Bengals did a really good job at neutralizing Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. So it's up to Patrick Mahomes now to go to his other options, like a Byron Pringle, like a McCole Hartman, or establish the run game when you got the lead. You know, you spent a first-round pick on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. I'd like to see more of him. You know, Jerry McKinnon wasn't really used that much. I don't know what they were doing, but still, you got to give hats off to the Bengals' defense. I mean, they stepped up big time. Uh, you talk about guys like Jesse Bates, the play he made in overtime to, you know, force the Von Bell interception, ultimately sealing the game for them. I mean, they played well. They played really, really, really well. Yeah, I was surprised at the second half Chiefs, um, excuse me, the Bengals defense. They, they really stepped up. But when it comes to Patrick Holmes, you're a leader. You're the captain of this team. You have the playoff experience. I don't know what happened at halftime. Maybe somebody said something to you that hurts. I don't know what's going on, but it was – when you stepped out on the field the second half, it was a different Patrick Mahomes. I didn't recognize this man at all. So I, I just had greater expectations. I expected them to score, and it just didn't happen. I expected them at least, if, like you said, if you shut down Travis Kelsey, exactly. if you shut down um, Tyreek Hill, I expected them at least to throw the ball out to um, Jerk McKinney. He's been a solid option for um, Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes right? when he has had – Hasn't had his primary options. So I just, if this was a, a big. So Rashad gave himself a pat on the back for calling that last game. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back for calling the Rams and the 49ers game. The Rams came out like the team we knew they would. I didn't expect the game to be as close. I expected the Rams to be more high powered offense, but they still showed up and they closed out the game like they should. Aaron Donald showed up at the end. 
but given the pressure in order for them to get the um, the game ceiling interception. So I don't know. The Rams look really good going into going into the Super Bowl. So I, hopefully they carry that momentum into this big game. Definitely, definitely. I mean, here's my take on the game, man. I feel like both teams, you know, made some questionable calls, but ultimately. The 49ers just made way too many mistakes. You're talking about to end in the fourth quarter. Jaquez Tar has an easy interception. And on that drive, the Rams ended up punting as well. But that's momentum. You know, that's momentum. He dropped it. S surprise. And then you talk about Jimmy Garoppolo trying to make a play at the end of the game. You know, almost getting sacked, throwing the ball to the running back, ends up getting picked. I mean, Kyle Shanahan teams always just, just fold. I don't know what it is. I, his clock management is just not up to par. We've seen it twice now in the Super Bowl. We saw it with the Chiefs Super Bowl against the Niners, and we saw it in the Falcons Patriots Super Bowl when they were up 20 to 3. We see how bad that went. It happened today again. They were up by 10 going into the fourth quarter. Things didn't go their way. Kyle Shanahan, man, it's time to make some adjustments now. It's definitely time to go in a different direction, I believe. Uh, but again, hats off to the Rams, like you said. Their defense played amazing. Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, they all did their things. Man, it's, it's going to be an interesting Super Bowl. I just got two words for you guys Cooper Cup. That man is like that. Like I said before from previous episodes, he is the best wide receiver in the NFL. With 11 catches and 142 yards, two touchdowns, one, one touchdown on one possession drive. And he also he keeps making big plays for this team. Okay. Day in, day out, every practice, every game, you can see it on film. When it's coming to clutch, he is there with the football. Especially when the score was 17-17 in the fourth quarter, caught a big play through by Matthew Stafford in the clutch to put him in field goal range to get that field goal to literally give them the 49 the chance, as we all know, 49 is really full in the game. Yep. And honestly, when you saw in that game, it doesn't matter the coverage you play, you double-team Cooper Cup, because you still have a player that goes. Coming off a season, getting cut from the Browns and joining the LA Rams, Odell has shown he's worth another contract coming in the free agent. Come, only got signed one year. He's worthy of getting signed again, either with the Rams or to another team, because he's shown that he's still that same Odell Beckham that we've seen from the Giants in his prime, and we thought we were going to see with the Browns. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. It's going to be interesting to see how the Bengals drop some coverage plays to cover Odell Beckham and Cooper Cup, and even Van Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And then, on top of that, I know Tyler Higby went down, but their backup um, tight end looked pretty good. He was making some plays, but it's just going to be hard to cover of all those pieces. And then Cam Akers and Sony Michelle on top of that. It's just it's just so many pieces to stay on top of. But we'll see what what goes on with the Bengals this coming Super Bowl. Yeah. But nice. Yeah, man, look, we gotta talk about him now. Jimmy Garoppolo. I feel like everybody kind of feels like he played his last game with the 49ers. I mean, they they traded a lot to move up in the draft to take Trey Lance. I feel like it's now his team to go and hopefully, you know, win a Super Bowl for them. He's going to be a hot commodity. I feel like a lot of teams are going to try to trade for him. And you talk about a guy who, you know, Tom Brady's retired now. Jimmy G is the only quarterback in the league with multiple Super Bowls. You know, so he's a win at the very least. And we already saw the reports that, you know, him and his camp, as well as the 49ers, are working on a trade. So if we had to say a team, you know, what team do we think Jimmy Garoppolo could get traded to? <laughs> you know, I'm always trying to recruit for my Steelers. <laughs> you know, I'm always trying to recruit. I think... The Steelers would be a good option if if they're just trying to, just for one or two years, just until it's a good QB draft class. Yeah. I'm going to stay in the same division, Malia, um, a, a team that's in need of a quarterback. Well, I mean in need of a quarterback other than the Pittsburgh Steelers is the Cleveland Browns. And uh, Baker Mayfield has shown me that he cannot be a franchise quarterback. Not for the Browns. He might be for another team going in for a trade, but he cannot. He has proven me that he cannot be a franchise quarterback in big games um, against the Ravens, um, the big divisional game um, around a uh, big Sunday night football game, middle of the season, the determined playoff position, even in the division, because at the time, the AFC North was close. It was close mainly yeah, the whole season. And he thrown multiple turnovers that really least like accountable that he really could have easily win that game because the, the Ravens gave him a turnover as well. So you had to capitalize on them turnovers instead of giving the raw ball right back. And he did that same thing against the Packers. Five interceptions is unacceptable. On Christmas Day, come on now, prime time, you, everybody's watching, and they really show you your true potential was not being a franchise quarterback with the Browns. And it needs to be a change. If the Browns want to take that next step, they have the key pieces on their team, even a strong defense. They have the pieces. They just need that QB to be back in competition with the AFC North. 
Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. I agree with the points that both of y'all made. I'm going to go out the division, uh, out the conference, actually, to the NFC. We know by now Tom Brady has retired. He's officially done with football. 22 seasons, incredible career. Mm -hmm. um, Hall of Famer, no doubt, the best quarterback we've ever seen in NFL history. But that leaves debatable. a big hole. Debatable. Okay. That leaves a big <laughs> hole joking. for the Buccaneers. Uh, they're going to need to do something because the team they have now is structured to win now. So they're going to have to make a move for a quarterback. And, I mean, you talk about a guy who was planned to be the successor to Tom Brady before he was traded to the 49ers. He gets that chance right here now to go to the Buccaneers. It'll be interesting, I believe, because we know Bruce Arian offenses are like an air raid offense. They love to pass the ball, whereas Jimmy G, as we've seen with his time with the Niners, they're a run-and-gun type of team. You know, they're at, they're at best when they have the lead. They can pound the clock and stuff like that. But still, I mean, you, you need a quarterback at the very least, like you talked about with the Steelers. Jimmy Garoppolo can be a good quarterback until you find that solidified option mm -hmm. for the future. And, I mean, like I said, he's a winning dude. He's not exactly. someone who's going to lose you games, per se. He's a good game manager, I believe, mm -hmm. so... I feel like that'd be a nice option. A trade shouldn't cost too much. And you want to at least keep some foundation for your team moving forward. You know, this is big. This is big. So I feel like the Buccaneers should jump on this opportunity right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But we're going to play a game of Jimmy G or the field. Okay. 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 It's an interesting game. Y'all can follow along as well. We're going to start off with Jimmy G or Trevor Lawrence. Ooh, Jimmy G or Trevor Lawrence. I'm going to go with Jimmy G on that one. I think Trevor Lawrence, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, it's hard to judge Trevor Lawrence talents just because of the management of the Jaguars and the head coaching. It's just been a lot of drama over there. But I'm going to just go with Jimmy G based off of, of experience. And I've, I've been able to see more of him. And he's, he's a solid guy. He can get you the first downs. He can win you games. So I'm going to go with Jimmy G on that one. Yeah, obviously, for right now, if yeah. all of these are, you know, exactly. talking right about now. right now, right now. Uh, I'm going to go with Jimmy G, too. You know, Trevor Lawrence is still inexperienced. He's young. Exactly. And like you said, the, the foundation or the management of that team hasn't been the best. So they haven't really put in the best situations to win. But what we've seen from Jimmy G, I'll take Jimmy G over Trevor Lawrence. I'm taking Jimmy G as well because Trevor Lawrence, like I said before, the foundation not there with the Jaguars. Um, just give it more time. They will have that foundation where Trevor Lawrence can show what he did with um, Clipson. So he can develop more form. Yeah. Moving on, we have Jimmy G or David Mills. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jimmy G again. Davis Mills is a nice quarterback. I feel like he's just one of those quarterbacks that, like, you know, teams didn't really worry about, so that's why he was able to, you know, dot and stuff like that. Mm. And now he's a rookie as well, so teams, you know, weren't really playing for him. He's, he's not a starting-level quarterback in NFL, in my opinion. That's why the Texans went, what, what, what did they go, like 2-14 and 14 or 3-13 and 13 or 3-14 and 14 or whatever. But still, I'm going to take Jimmy G over Davis Mills. Yeah, Jimmy G as well. Same same reason then. Jimmy G, Jimmy G, <laughs> Jimmy G. All right, this is really Ooh, a, this gonna, a, this is gonna be an interesting one that I really want to talk about as well. Jimmy G or Ryan Tannehill? Mm. I know my answer. You could go. I'll let you I'm go. Gonna yeah. go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Ryan Tannehill. I like Ryan Tannehill over Jimmy G. You can kind of say they do the same thing as well as game manager, but. Ryan Tannehill has the escapability, you know, he's able to rush out the pocket and stuff. And I feel like Ryan Tannehill has a better arm than Jimmy G does. I feel like okay, Ryan Tannehill yeah. has a better chance to win you a game than Jimmy G does. So I'm going to go Ryan Tannehill. I, I agree. I feel like they're similar just in that both of their teams are one first team. Mm -hmm. And they both have a lot of speedsters on their team. But um, like you said, I'm going to just go. I'm going to go with Ryan Tannehill just off of his ability to throw the ball deep. He, he, has, a, he has a nice arm on him. So, I'm going to have yeah. to disagree. I'm going to go with Jimmy G on this one for several reasons. Um, of course, he has a better arm, but where is the accuracy? And you have all those um, weapons on the uh, Titans. And it literally showed me in that previous playoff game, literally three interceptions, able to turn the football, the decision-making. And Jimmy G, of course, his decision-making is about the same, <clears> but <throat> Jimmy G wins playoff games. Mike Ryan Tannehill, he cannot win multiple playoff games. With the, even with the roster he has, he has not shown me that he can win multiple playoff games when Jimmy G has won multiple playoff games. And that's basically the biggest cue. Can your QB win in the big time? And I got Jimmy G in that uh, debate. Okay, okay, okay. Next one, this is pretty interesting. Um, Jimmy G or Carson Wentz. <laughs> I'm going to have to pick um, Jimmy G on this one because um, Carson Wentz, of mm. course, dealing with injury. Um, he hasn't shown that true, true potential come with the Colts. Um, as if the Colts do keep him this past offseason and give him another year fully healthy, if he can stay healthy, because every year he ends up injured. And, um, but he did lead the Eagles to the playoffs in a great record, but leading off Nick, Nick Foles carrying the Super Bowl and winning it. 
Um, I still got to give Jimmy G the leverage um, because of his decision making and also be able to move the ball in multiple ways then, uh, and basically move in the pocket as well than Carson Wentz. I'm going to disagree. I, if you can't tell, I like a quarterback that can throw the ball deep. I'm going to go with Carson Wentz. I need you, a quarterback is a quarterback for a reason. I need you to throw the ball. You have the, the deep threats. Carson Wentz, he has T.Y. Hilton on his team. He has um, Michael P. And he has Zach um, Pascal. So he has, like, some deep options. And he's shown that he can – he has the accuracy as well. So I'm, I'm going to go with Carson Wentz on that one. He's, he's the better quarterback to me. I'm going to agree with Malia. I'm going to go with Carson Wentz. I'm still a Carson Wentz believer. Um, I, like, <laughs> yeah. I like his aggressive state. I like, you know, like you said, the deep balls and everything. And it's not like he, he got a Jimmy G level team. He doesn't have a George Kittle or a Debo Samuel to mm-hmm. go to. You know, Michael Pittman, of course, is a nice receiver. You know, T.Y. Hillen. They're not Debo Samuel, though. Okay, they're not George Kittle. So um, They're running back? Um, they're running back, yeah. I mean, Jonathan Taylor is great, you know, of course. But, but he's not a running back yeah, to throw to out of yeah, the... I mean, you can still yeah. throw it to him, you know, of course. He, he's a nice receiving yeah. option, but still, you know. If they get Carson Wentz more options and he gets comfortable in that offense, no, you, you can talk about the season, but he started the year off injured. Mm-hmm. You know, the O-line had some injuries as well. There was injuries to, you know, the wide receivers too. T.Y. Hill was hurt sometimes and stuff like that, so... There were some issues there. I feel like now that he's really, you know, acclimated to that team, Carson Wentz should have a great season next year, and that's why I think he's better than Jimmy G. All right, bet. So um, next pick, we have Jimmy G or Derek Carr. I already got my pick in this one. I'm gonna let y'all start off. Mm, I'm a, I'm gonna go with Derek Carr on this one, just because I think Derek Carr is a great leader. On and off the field, he's a great leader. And I think he's definitely proved that this past season, with all the stuff that's happened off the field with the Raiders organization, he stepped up and he's led his team to the playoffs. Obviously, they fell short, but he, he definitely stepped up. And, yeah, I just, I just like the way that he leads his team. And, you know me, he could throw the ball deep. He had <laughs> – that's what I mean, quarterbacks nowadays, yeah. you know – we got quarterbacks that's running the ball out of the pocket. They're, they're running back slash quarterbacks. But, no, Derek Carr, he can throw the ball deep, and he makes plays. And, yeah, he just has the experience, too. Yeah, I'm going to definitely go with Derek Carr, too. Like you said, for a quarterback, you need to be that leader. Yeah. And that's what he did. Everything happened. You lose your coach. You lose your number one receiver, exactly. wide receiver at that. Um, Darren Waller missed some time to end the season when it was that push to make the playoffs, and he still led his team to the playoffs. They, he still threw for 5,000 yards. I mean, the clutch G may not be there for Derek Carr, but he's still a great quarterback in my eyes. Um, I like Derek Carr, so I definitely do think he's over Jimmy Garoppolo. I definitely agree on that because I definitely agree with Derek Carr based on the points I just made and based on the team they had compared to Jimmy G because Jimmy G yeah. had mm-hmm. George Kittle. He had D.B.O. Samuel, but what did the Raiders have? Of course, they had Darren Waller. He dealt That's with about injury. It. Mm-hmm. And, of course, um, Hunter Renfro Deshaun... stepped up, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hunter Renfro. Deshaun really Jackson, good. too. But he exactly. is Deshaun, in very inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Deshaun is inconsistent. And he's also injury prone as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got Derek Carr in this pick. So. Definitely. All right, so the next one we have Jimmy G or Jameis Winston. Who you got? You know I'm going to go with my guy, Jameis Winston, man. Crab legs himself, man. Look. <laughs> You talk about what Jameis done before his ACL injury was really turning up for the Saints. I feel like if he was healthy all year, we definitely would have made the playoffs. Uh, and you look at the weapons he had. Michael Thomas was out for the whole year. He's throwing to Marquez Calloway, Deontay Harris, mm-hmm. you know, guys who are one to two, three-year guys. They aren't top receivers. You know, the tight end option was, was bleak. You know, he still had Alvin, Alvin Kamara, but it just, it just wasn't the same. You know, yeah. everything the Saints went through, he was still able to do his thing. Um, and like you just talked about, you like a quarterback that can throw the ball. You know, Jameis has, there's times yes. where, you know, he has the crazy throws, but still, he's not afraid to make those decisions. I like aggressive quarterbacks. He's proven to be a 5,000-yard quarterback. Definitely. I like him over Jimmy G. I agree. Okay. Um, um even, oh. <laughs> you. Uh, you could go. You could go. <laughs> I'm going to take Jimmy G on this one. Um, just for several reasons, Jameis. Don't get me wrong, I like the key points that Amadou did point out with uh, the injury he dealt with. Michael Thomas out the rest of the year. Um, he still had Alvin Kamara, still, he had double injuries throughout the year. Um, but I still got to go with Jimmy G with his, uh, on this um, based off the coaching. Not as the coaching, but as the personnel. Not just straight off, like, offensive coordinator that, um, that they have for the 49ers that had to run base uh, offense. Um, because that's coached by Kyle Shanahan, which is a familiar playbook, what he did with 2012 with the Washington Redskins. With um, having that run game with RG3 and Alfred Morris, 
Um, and with the implement that playbook with the um the 49ers that fit Jimmy G's play style, which made him flourish in that field. And Jimmy, G, I mean, uh, Jameis, it's gonna take him time. Give him, I say next year, I can give my answer then. But Jameis gonna be show his full potential with Michael Thomas back yep. and Alvin Kamara fully back, healthy with that defense that really showed a lot. I'm gonna go with on this one with Jameis. You guys already know my reasoning. He can prove like he can throw the ball. He can. He's good. Yeah, he can. I mean, his decision making isn't always there, a hundred percent. But he's still working on that. He hasn't been. I don't think he's been given a chance to really prove himself exactly. fully with a great organization and great coaching. Unfortunately, last season it was cut short because the Saints they had they had a great organization, great coaching staff, but it was cut short due to his injury. So hopefully this season, you know, there's some changes made and he's able to prove everybody wrong. But Jameis Winston on this one. All right, next one. Jimmy G or Kirk Cousins? Well, with these two quarterbacks to me, they're like really similar to me, honestly. Hmm. Um, two quarterbacks that are questioned and judgment making um, with Kirk Cousins and Jimmy G. But on this verse, at first I would have picked Jimmy G, but in this match I'm picking Kirk Cousins. Um, based off that Jimmy G, in my personal opinion, he had he has a better defense, of course. And some of these games you really watch, he has zero touchdowns, especially against the Packers game. Um, got carried by the special teams and the defense. Mm -hmm. And some things with the Vikings did, they didn't really have a good defense, like, all around, um, especially with their young uh, DB core that they had was pretty awful. Not pretty awful, but they wasn't as developed. And, and I guarantee you, if Kirk Cousins had that defense, they would have forged the exact same way even more with um, Adam Thielen, with Justin Jefferson. And um, literally, Kirk Cousins is literally a quarterback that can sling the ball. He can. Um, based off previous with the Washington Redskins, of course, he can sling the ball down the field. It doesn't make it can be a little sus, <laughs> but he also proved that he can win games by throwing the football to his weapons and getting his weapons inside the game. So I'm going with Kirk Cousins in this, game, in this matchup. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins too. Um, I feel like, I don't, I don't know if they're really similar, uh, but Kirk Cousins, he does a great job of protecting the ball. You know, he, um, he had a low amount of interceptions this year to his touchdown total. Um, I want to say Kirkens is more of a game manager. He can definitely win you some games. Jimmy Garoppolo too, but not to the extent that Kirk Cousins can, in my opinion. I feel like if you substitute Kirk Cousins for Jimmy Garoppolo, the Niners are probably in the Super Bowl right now. So hmm. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Kirk Cousins on this one. All right, I definitely agree with both of you guys. You guys made va valid points about him being able to sling the ball and manage the game. So yeah, I'm definitely choosing Kirk Cousins on this one. Yep. Beautiful. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for this week's episode. We'll be back next week. We're going to talk in depth about the Super Bowl, give our Super Bowl picks, you know, really talk about each team, what they do best, what they don't do so good. So you guys and make sure MVP. to tune into that one. The MVP as well, man. Yeah. And we can also talk about the honors, too. Exactly. You know? yeah. yep. Who get defensive player of the year? Who, Who get MVP? MVP? Offensive player of the year. And also, yes, make sure y'all comment who y'all got in the Super Bowl. Rams Definitely. or the Bengals? Y'all got Joe Shiesty or y'all got Old Beckham, <laughs> Odell Beckham in this matchup? Yep. Man, we appreciate you guys. We're going to see you guys next week. See y'all.